So I've been tinkering with my new multi-screen cockpit a little bit more and I thought it would be a good idea to say something about how to set up the zoom correctly. Now if you don't understand how this cockpit is constructed, um, have a look at my previous video. This is a trip, just to recap, this is a triple head to go, single display in the middle and I've got two flanking portrait orientation, 1080p uh, well, actually, it's one 1080p monitor, and this is an uh, older, <laughs> uh, what, 1650 by 1080. So, anyway, there you go. You may be confused at how this can work, given how the multi screen setup works in FS 2020, but as long as the screen heights are the same, you can mix and match them in a multi screen setup. So, as I say, see my previous video for a little bit more on that. But setting up the zoom, we've got two, uh, maybe three things we need to do to set up the zoom appropriately. The first thing we need to do is find a way to adjust the zoom setting sensitively. At the moment, if you use the mouse wheel to zoom in, um, you get very large jumps. And so you can't adjust it sensitively. There's no obvious way to do that in the control setup but if you're using a program like spad.next as I am you can access a variable called a data value called um, was it cockpit zoom percent or something like that it's a percentage value and you can map that to a control I've got it mapped to a rotary encoder wheel and so it's stepping through the, zo the zoom is measured in FS2020 in terms of percent 50 percent is the default so you can go out from there or you can, you can go in from there. So let's just have a quick look into spad.next so we can see how to set up that zoom. I have it on this PBI32 buttons 13 and 14. So if you go to button 14, you can see I've got one action on the button press. We edit that. It's changing the data value and the data value is cockpit camera zoom, which is a variable exposed by FS2020. And if you look down there, you can see it's a percentage and it's currently set to 77 and the action that we've got on that is increment and then I've got likewise a decrement on the other button and a third thing I've got is when I press it's got a center push on this rotary control I'll click on that that just sets the same variable to a fixed value which I've established is 77 so there you go, your mileage may vary if you're using one of the other tools, but uh, very easy to automate that. The next thing you've got to do is, and this is particular to your display, you need to measure the, you need to sit where you're going to be sitting, the, the correct distance from the display, and you've got to measure the actual field of view. So from your eye point, imagine a, a triangle that goes out to the, that connects your eye point to the edges of the screen, or in fact the edges of the display here, my display, doesn't fill the whole screen because of the way the bezel management on the triple head to go works. You can eyeball that, you can estimate that, you can use a protractor. I've got an aviation protractor here and a couple of pieces of string. Mine's close to 90 degrees actually so it's reasonably easy to eyeball that with you know a 90 degree angle. So you want a pretty reasonable estimate of the actual field of view and that will allow you to set up a zoom to give you approximately life size display. It's not life size at the moment We'll get to that. Next thing you've got to do is find yourself an airport with a compass rose on the ground. The bigger the better and actually the one I recommend is Edwards Air Force Base. It's got, I believe it's the largest compass rose in the world I read somewhere, <laughs> which is on the, it's actually inscribed on the desert floor and you want to put yourself at the centre of that with your cockpit basically over the centre of that and that allows you to see markings on the ground in the real world that tell you what field of view FSX is displaying on the screen. And most compass roses, including the one at Edwards, give you 45 degree segments. So in my case, if I sit on that compass rose, looking directly along one of the cardinal lines, say, I should see two 45 degree lines out towards the, the sides. And because my display is pretty much 90 degree actual field of view, I need to set my zoom so that those 90 degree lines match up with the edges of my display. And if I do that, my display will look approximately life-sized. And as a preview, that's what it will look like. 
Now the other significance of that 90 degree field of view is that in our multi-screen setup we must set lateral rotation offsets for the left and right views to be about 45 degrees. Now it's more than 45 degrees because we've got the bezels and we've got actually wider than the bezels because the triple head to go bezel management introduces this extra gap at the side. So we've got what looks like from my setup about an extra 10 or 12 degrees to get the side views to line up. Now you know you have to understand in this configuration I've got quite a skinny forward view but this is designed with my Air, Air Manager 2D panel below. So when I have this set up for flying, and this is the default Cessna 172, what I tend to do is move the view forwards and probably a little bit up as well so I can get a view of the nose of the aircraft. And that's pretty much how I, I fly. So you can see it's, if it's not life size ex exactly, it's pretty, you know, it's in the ballpark. Obviously I'm not using the virtual cockpit. It would be nice to get the side views, you know, I can arrange it so I could see the struts at the side just by moving backwards. Although that's a helpful view in some ways, it kind of breaks the illusion because I've got the virtual cockpit panel there and of course I've got this superstructure in the way, which in the Cessna 172, that takes a large chunk of my view, which I don't really like. I mean, it's very difficult to show, it's a wraparound experience, of course, um, it's difficult by definition to show that on a simple YouTube video, but it's a very compelling experience. I, I mean, I have to say the performance isn't up to it. I get very low frame rate, but this is a very old computer. It's about time I need to update my computer. And if I'm going to persist with this, maybe that's what I'll do. I'm currently limited, the developer mode tells me, by the CPU. I've got a GTX 1080 card in there, which is probably a bit long in the tooth, but um, at the moment that's not holding me back. So there it is, multi-screen display in flights in 2020. This is definitely a usable setup with the default. I mean, I'm not going to necessarily use the default 172. I'm still thinking about an aircraft that's going to be suitable. But I've got this one set up with a good air manager panel out of the box. I've got my old repurposed Twin Otter autopilot panel hooked up now to the KAP140 default, that's got all the functions I need, but for now it's the default 172, which works really well, performance notwithstanding. So time will tell if I'm going to be sufficiently motivated to invest in a new PC.